When we found out, when my son was diagnosed as being hearing impaired, we found out through the newborn hearing screening. We were told that he was deaf uh, at that time. We were quite in denial and didn't want to believe it and just hoped that his hearing would progress. But unfortunately, he had some residual hearing, but not a lot or not enough to pick up sound. Um, and that was only with the aid of hearing aids. Um, after about a year or so, he was being monitored regularly and we were told that the hearing aids weren't doing anything for him. So then the other option would be going down a cochlear implant route. We are there to overcome hearing loss as a barrier to communication and quality of life. And quality of life means a lot more than just understanding a little bit of speech and having a conversation in quiet. It means that you also enjoy music, for example. I always wanted to help people with their quality of life through technology. And so when the chance came along to develop a cochlear implant, then I really knew this was the goal for many years. And I think that hearing loss often remains untreated, mainly due to three reasons, I would say. On the one hand, there is the stigma. People think that if they have a hearing loss and they go for a hearing solution, at that point in time, they're considered as being disabled and not able to do everything anymore. I think a second reason might be lack of awareness, lack of awareness with the people themselves and the professionals, so they're not aware of potential solutions which might exist out there. And I think the third thing is also that people just see it as a normal part of the aging process and they think like they should just live with it and not go for a solution. The fully implantable cochlear implant is now the newest thing that has just finished the feasibility study. But after 40 years or more, developing um, partly implantable uh, cochlear implants. Robotics are entering our field, the field of uh, hearing implants. The robotics will help to be more precise, be faster, and be able to insert the electrode of a cochlear implant in a very slow and consistent movement such that more of the residual hearing can be preserved. The device to do that has a C mark and already at this point in time, more than 50 patients have received their cochlear implant supported by this uh, surgical robot. That is an important goal, preserving the residual hearing to a higher extent than already possible. Yeah, we want to be able to offer quite a range of solutions for people with different kinds and amounts of hearing loss. And it ranges from the cochlear implant to a combination of acoustic amplification, like with a hearing aid and the electrical stimulation to a middle ear solutions or bone conduction devices or even passive middle ear implants. Every age group can benefit from very young to very old, uh, but for children who are born deaf, it's very important that they be implanted as early as possible. And between five months and a year or a year and a half is the optimal uh, timing because they need time for rehab before they enter school. The earlier they get implanted, the easier it is to get up to the best benefit that they can get out of the devices. I got my first cochlear implant in 1996 on the left side, and I got my second cochlear implant two years later on the right side. I was the first child that had a bilateral implantation. Back then, the uh, medical world didn't really believe that you can hear with two cochlear implants at once. They thought that uh, one cochlear implant is already too much for the brain 
and they could not merge the information of two cochlear implants. After my implantation on the second side, after the cochlear implant has been turned on, I improved a lot in my general hearing and it was a safe proof that it is possible to hear with two ears with the cochlear implants. I'm a part of the research and development of MedEl and I want to improve the technology we are all using. Here at MedEl, it is important not to leave any patient behind. New technologies will come up and will arise and our patients who have been implanted a longer time ago, let's say 20 or 30 years ago, I mean, need to be able to benefit from this latest technology which is out there, from the optimal um, possibilities towards speech understanding, inquired, in noise, or for example, towards music perception and enjoyment.